Thank you for listening to this message from Simple Truth Gospel with Kiria, a teaching ministry that teaches the Word of God verse by verse to help you grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Good morning, my good friends, and uh, welcome to Simple Truth Gospel. Today, we will start the book of Hebrews. In this book, you will find out the superiority of Jesus Christ above everything that is created. But before we start, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for yet another opportunity for your children to gather this morning to study your word. Jesus said, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Father, we desire always your word of life. David said, before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. Help us to make your word the final authority in our lives, in every decision that we make. Because without your word, there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Dear Holy Spirit, we pray that you will give us today revelation, knowledge, understanding, light, guidance into the truth. We pray that you will open the eyes of understanding of everyone listening this morning. Heavenly Father, teach us to understand that Jesus Christ created the heavens and the earth. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. And that uh, he is the only one that is superior above everything that is created. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto your name we give praise, glory, honor, dominion forever and ever. We thank you for all that you have done for us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody said, Amen. My good friends, I'm so excited. We are starting a, a new book today, the book of Hebrews. Uh, let me tell you this story about uh, a man who was looking for his car keys. He lost his car keys in his garage. But then he went outside in front of the garage. He was looking for his car keys. And then the neighbor came to help him to look for his car keys. And they looked, they looked, they looked. And after a while, the neighbor asked him, are you sure that you lost your keys outside here? And the man responded, no, I lost them inside the garage. And the neighbor said, so what are we looking outside here? And the man said, because the light is better here. <laughs> so in the book of Hebrews, if you want to find out, the superiority of Jesus Christ over everything that is created, the light is better <laughs> in the book of uh, Hebrews. Let me give you um background about uh, the book of uh, Hebrews. It is commonly believed that Paul wrote this book, and I tend to believe the same. Uh, whoever wrote this book uh, had... Uh, had a very good knowledge of uh, Greek language as well as the Old Testament scriptures. I believe that Paul wrote this letter because of the style. In uh, Paul's letters, in his epistles, uh, there is a certain style that he follows. Uh, he will first of all present the doctrine, the doctrine part and then he will follow up with uh, the application. We see this in the book of uh, Romans, which we just uh, finished. Uh, Paul spent uh, chapters 1 all the way to chapter 11, telling us about the goodness of God, what God has done for us, what we have in Christ Jesus, the things that belong to us. And then uh, once we got to chapter 12, he said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the message of God that you present your body as a living sacrifice. So he tells us the doctrine and then he will tell us how to apply it, how to give that doctrine a corresponding action. And he does the same in this book. So he will start with the doctrine 
part of it and towards the end of it he will give us the application there are some who believe that um uh apollos wrote this book and some who believe that it is written by um uh, priscilla and aquila tutulian a latin apologist and a theologian also known as the father <clears throat> of latin christianity believe that uh, Barnabas wrote this letter. But uh, my friends, it doesn't matter who wrote it. <laughs> the author is not as important as the message itself because we know it is inspired by the Holy Spirit. When we get to heaven, we're going to ask Paul who wrote the letter. And if Paul says, I wrote it, I'm going to brag and I tell you, <laughs> I told you. But if Paul says, I did not write it, then we're going to ask Paul, who did? <laughs> it is believed that this letter was penned before 70 AD. Uh, because it does not talk about the destruction of uh, the temple by, Emperor, by, by General Titus in 70 AD. This book was written to the audience, to a, a Hebrew audience. So we're talking about uh, 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 mess Messianic Jews now. Those who have come to faith in Christ Jesus. But now they are drifting back into Judaism because of uh, they are being hassled because of persecution. So these are the Jews now. The audience are the Jews. It wasn't written to the Gentiles at this time. And uh, so the writer encourages them that Jesus Christ is the center of it all, not to depart from the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The writer here encourages them that Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of all the uh, 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 prophecies. So, the book of Leviticus lays a very good foundation on what is going on in the book of Hebrews. So it is a very good book that you can study side by side so that you can get even more understanding of what the book of uh, Hebrews is talking about. With all this said, we're going to go ahead now and uh, start. So like I, uh, 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 this book, I, I forgot to tell you, is all about uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, the superiority of Jesus Christ over angels, over the high priests, over Moses and the law. Uh, 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 so now we, we start in verse 1. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in the time past to the fathers by the prophets. We're going to stop here. If you're wondering what version that I'm using, I'm using the New King James Version. So, it takes us here now to the origin. Genesis. You remember when Adam and Eve committed high treason, they disobeyed God. That day, they died spiritually. Now, their spiritual death did not uh, 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 end with them. Rather, everyone who was born after Adam and Eve inherited this spiritual death. But God in his infinite love and mercy towards us, already based on his foreknowledge, knew that mankind would need rescue. So he planned it from the foundation of the word. The Bible tells us in Revelation, Jesus Christ was the lamb slain from the foundation of the word. But for God to communicate to us the plan, the plan of redemption, the plan that will reunite us back with him, he started speaking to people. He started with a Abraham, and then uh, to Moses, uh, to Joshua, and now to prophets. 
So he spoke to them through uh, visions, through dreams, through audible voices, and through still small voices. God communicated to us what he wants us to know because God knows everything and we don't know everything. If you know everything, it means that you, you are God. So he will tell us what he wants us to know through these uh, people that I have just mentioned. And uh, you know, Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, secret things belong to our God. But the things which are revealed belongs to us and to our children forever and ever. We also see here that uh, the Old Testament is scripture, is the word of God, because uh, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. For holy men of old wrote as they were moved by the Holy Spirit of God. <clears throat> we are now in verse uh, 2. We are only in verse 2, but um, I promise you it's not a, a very long chapter. Uh, I think it's about 14 chapters here, so we will finish on time. Verse 2 has in this last day spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things. Through him also he made the words. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in verse 2, God, in order to continue giving us his revelation <clears throat> about how we can be saved, about how we can be reunited with him, about how we can be redeemed through Jesus Christ, now came in person. He loved us so much that he became a man. And we see this in John chapter 1 verse 14. And the word took flesh and dwelt among us. So Jesus Christ came in the form of a person, just like you and I. And uh, when he came, he did not uh, contradict what the prophets already said. No. Right? He, he said, he said uh, I did not come to destroy the law and the prophet, but rather I came to fulfill them. He also made corrections on what the prophet said that we are uh, misinterpreted. Like if you read the Mishnah, which is the codified oral law, or the Talmud, uh, which is the commentary on this uh, Mishnah, you will see that uh, uh, the, 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 the laws of Moses were uh, most of the times misinterpreted. So Jesus Christ came and he made corrections in these areas and uh, uh, he, he pointed to the fact that uh, the law was not given to govern the outside uh, behavior, but also it governed also their uh, inward attitude. For example, he will say, you have heard that he, he was saying that he, you should not commit adultery, but I tell you, anyone looks at a woman lustfully, they have already committed adultery with that woman in the heart. So he made uh, clarifications and corrected uh, the things that uh, they were misinterpreting at the time when he was here on earth. So after Jesus Christ went to heaven, the apostles continued with this revelation. Paul continued with this revelation. And you know that uh, revelation is progressive, not only in what we are talking about right now, because God started with Abraham and all the way to Paul and continued to give us revelation, but also in our personal lives. You see, the more we study the word of God, the more we get revelation knowledge. Because the Bible says the entrance of his word gives light and it gives understanding to the simple. So we study, we become. We all with open face, beholding uh, like in, in a glass, the glory of God, a change to the same image from glory to glory. The more we look, the more we get revelation knowledge, the more we get understanding. This is why we have baby Christians, which means they just came to faith in Christ Jesus. 
they need the word of God in order to mature. So don't say that I have arrived. No, you can never know every revelation that God wants you to have. But we is a progress we make. Every day we go, we study, we know, we study, we know more, even more and more. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, it tells us here that Jesus Christ created the heavens and the earth. John chapter 1 tells us that all things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. And not only that he created all things, but also all things were created for him. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> we see this in Revelation chapter 4. Uh, if you pick it up from uh, uh, verse 11. You know when the 24 elders in heaven, they will cast their crown in, in the presence of the throne of God. And they will say, you are worthy to receive glory, honor, and power. You created all things for your pleasure. They are and they were created for your pleasure. They are and they were created. So we are created, good friends of mine, for the glory of God. Always remember this. I am created for his own glory. Created for the things that will please him. I am created as one who belongs to God, not as an enemy of God, but for his own glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> we are now in verse uh, 3. <clears throat> who, being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all the things by the word of his power, when he had by himself pushed our sins, sat down at the right hand of majesty on high. He begins to talk about Jesus Christ here now being God, the deity of Christ. So he says Jesus Christ is the express image of God. He's like the icon. You know, in your computer, you have, an ic you have icons in front of your desktop. It's just a little small box. You don't see anything in there. You don't know what is in there until you click. And once you click, it will open a file to you. And in that file, you can see the information. Maybe the, the, the title of that icon, maybe it says uh, uh, expenses. Just a title. And when you look at that icon, that's all you see, expenses. But it doesn't give you the details until you click. And once you click, a file will open and it will give you all the details of, you know, how much you have spent, <laughs> you know, and your budget and all that. So, Jesus Christ, God the Father is a spirit. We cannot see God with our physical eyes. No one has ever seen God, the Bible tells us. But God revealed himself through Jesus Christ. But his only begotten son who sits at the right hand of his bosom, through him he has revealed himself to us. So God, wanting us to know what he is like, revealed himself through Jesus Christ. And that's why when Jesus Christ came, he said, If you see me, you have seen the Father. I and the Father are one. You know, reason why they wanted to stone him because they said, you being a human being makes yourself equal with God. So if you want to know the goodness of God, his love towards us, his blessings, his mercy, his forgiveness, his heart, his wisdom, his plans for us. You look at Jesus. <laughs> you look at his ministry, the things he said, the things he did. That tells you about who the Father is. For Jesus Christ is the full representation of the God's head. All the attributes of God, every one of them, you see them in Jesus Christ. That's what he's telling us here. 
So Jesus Christ is the full embodiment of God. You know, there are some people who don't believe in the deity of Christ. But I tell you this thing, my good friends. You are not a Christian if you don't believe in the deity of Christ. You are not a Christian if you don't believe the incarnation of Christ. You are not a Christian if you don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. No, you are not. You are not a Christian. You may be a church member, but not a Christian. Now, also in this verse, we see that Jesus Christ upholds the universe by the word of his power. Not only that he created all things, but he also holds the universe together. <laughs> very, very... Now, sometimes sit down and imagine things. It, it will blow your mind sometimes. It, it, sit down and imagine how big this universe is. Just our planet. Do you know how big our planet is? Yet our planet is able to orbit around the sun without, without crashing. <laughs> Have you ever thought what is holding it together, not crashing? Have you ever thought about the, the protons in the nucleus of an atom? How they are held together, contrary to Coulomb's law. You know, like terms supposed to repel each other. But they are held, they are held together. <laughs> there is a force that is holding them together. Do you know what that force is? Jesus Christ. He is. The one that upholds the universe by the word of his power. Now, there is a day that he's going to let go. And any day that he lets go will be the end <laughs> of this universe. The end of this world. Also, we find out here that Jesus Christ is now sitting at the right hand of the Father. What does that mean? It is a metaphor. To sit at the right hand of the Father, it is a metaphor to express or to say that uh, he finished with the redemptive work that God sent him to do. So the work of redemption is completed now. Nothing has to be added to it. This is why you come to Jesus Christ. The only way you have access to heaven is you come through Jesus Christ. There is nothing else that you can add to it. He finished it up. But is he done with everything? No. He's still doing something today. The Bible tells us that he ever lives to make intercessions for us. So he is at the right hand of the Father as we speak right now, interceding for you and I. When the accuser of the brethren, Satan and all his demons will bring accusation against you to the Father in heaven, Jesus Christ is there to defend you. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there are some things that when you know them, oh my, my friends, it makes you stand bold. <laughs> Not bold in your own power, but bold in the revelation that you know. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are now in verse... Um, Four, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For to which of the angels did he ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you? Now he's getting this from Psalms 2 7. And again, I will be to him a father. And he shall be to me a son. This is Second Samuel chapter uh, uh, 7. In verse 6 he says, But when he again begin, brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. And of all the angels, he says, Who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. Quoting from Psalm 104, verse 4. So now, you can see that whoever wrote this book, uh, he, he, he has a, a working knowledge of the Old Testament. Because you're going to see a lot of quotations from the Old Testament in this book. 
So now he begins to talk about the superiority of Jesus Christ. Because I told you that this book will tell us about the spiritual uh, uh, superiority of Jesus Christ over so many things. So we begin with angels here. And uh, the, he, he inherited, he, this, uh, this superiority was through inheritance. We see this in Philippians chapter uh, 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 2. And God has highly exalted him and has given him a name above all names that at the mention of the name of Jesus Christ, every meal must bow of beings in heaven and earth and under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. He also obtained this inheritance through conquest. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 15, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a public show of them by triumphing over them in it. So you see that uh, the angels, they worship Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is not an angel. Rather, the angels that he created worshipped him. We see this in the book of Revelation, and it tells us that the four-winged creatures worship the lamb uh, in the midst of the throne. Who is the lamb in the midst of the throne? Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ was here on earth, the angels ministered to him. Remember when he was tempted, uh, after 40 days, he, he fasted in the, in the wilderness and was tempted by uh, uh, Satan. And at the end of the temptation, we are told that the angels ministered unto him. Also in the garden of Gethsemane, when he sweated blood, we were also told that the angels ministered unto him. So while we are in this area, uh, let me um, uh, let, 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 let us talk about angels for a moment. It, it will be a good opportunity for us to know what the Bible says about angels. It's a very good topic and a big one in the Bible. Because there are people, who, you know, when you talk about angels, they, they, they don't believe. <laughs> they really don't believe. But the Bible says a lot about angels. Now, the word, the Greek word angel uh, is uh, angelos. It means uh, a messenger or a dispatched one. You know, it can be a heavenly messengers, which we, when we talk about angels, they are heavenly messengers, spiritual messengers. We also, we also have uh, physical messengers. It's the same word, angelos. Remember in the book of Revelation, it says, to the seven churches, to the angels of the seven churches, right? So a human being is the same word, a messenger, angelos. In the Bible, both in the Old and the New Testament, the word angels or the word angel, you will see it about 300 times. That's a lot. And about 34 books in the Bible, 17 in the Old Testament and 17 in the New Testament, they talk about angels. Now, angels do not procreate, which means they do not multiply. Jesus Christ telling us, uh, he said, in heaven we will not be given into marriage, just like the angels. So that's what he was talking about. Because the angels don't reproduce, that's the same way we're going to be in heaven. And this is the reason why some places they are called sons of God, holy ones. Now, we have a cherubim. Now, these are angels that are uh, 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 mostly the, the guide, the throne. We have cherubim. And if you want to know, the, uh, a singular will be cherub. So cherubim is the plural version of uh, cherub. So we have cherubim. What they do is uh, 
pretty much in guiding the throne of God. In in uh, uh, these are the angels that God put in uh, uh, Garden of Eden when uh, Adam and Eve were uh, driven out of the Garden of Eden. Uh, uh, God put uh, angels there with uh, flaming swords so to prevent Adam and Eve from going back in there and eating of the fruit of life. Because if they go back in there and eat the fruit of life, it means that they will remain in their fallen state forever and ever. And we can see this as an act of love, act of mercy from God keeping human beings from being in that state of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of condemnation for eternity. Now we have set a theme. Now these are angels now, mostly in the praising and in the worshiping of God. We see, uh, we see seraphim in the vision of Ezekiel, you know, in his vision of uh, heaven. Now, these are the angels who we are saying, holy, 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 seraphim. The Bible talks about uh, four-winged creatures in the presence of God. And it tells us day and night, they cease not to say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. The Bible gives us the name of three archangels. And they are Gabriel, Daniel, uh, uh, Gabriel, Michael, and uh, Lucifer. And the Bible called Lucifer a cherub. Now, what is the purpose of angels? What do they do? A good question. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Apart from the two things that we mentioned earlier, they guide the throne of God. And uh, you, you see them also, the cherub, you see them on top of the Ark of the Covenant. Those are the two angels there uh, uh, with their wings embracing each other. Uh, they are cherub. So apart from them guiding and the praise and in the worshiping of God, God will use them in special occasions to deliver his message or what he wants to be done. We see angel Gabriel uh, uh, came to Mary to deliver the message of, of the conception of Jesus Christ. He also told uh, Joseph about uh, taking Mary and Joseph uh, and, uh, and Jesus Christ and going to Egypt because uh, Herod the Great uh, wanted to kill them. In Zacharias, Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist, also angel Gabriel went up there to deliver the message that he's going to have a son, even in his old age. God used the angels in the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. And in the future, he's going to use them to administer his wrath upon the earth during the time of tribulation. We see this in Revelation uh, when the seven trumpets will sound. The seven trumpets will be administered by angels. And also the seven vials, when they'll be poured out upon the earth, the angels will be the ones administering this. And also we will see an angel will take hold of Satan and bind him and put him into that bottomless pit and will seal it up. An angel as well. And also we see that an angel will preach the gospel from the air. In every tongue, every tribe, and every nation. During the time of tribulation. Angels don't preach the gospel now. They don't. But we are told in the book of Revelation, an angel will preach the gospel from the air. So the angels, they do so many things for us. Uh, uh, they are very important. They, in, in Psalm 103, the Bible tells us they hearken after the voice of the word of God. Which means they do his bid. They do what God wants them to do. Now, angels also minister to us. Another thing they do, <laughs> they minister to us. <laughs> you know, this is the reason why we don't worship angels. 
We don't pray to angels. We don't worship them. We don't ask angels to pray for us. Very wrong. It's not biblical. We don't say, Angel Michael, pray for us. Angel Gabriel, pray for us. No, it's unbiblical. The Bible tells us that is only one mediator between man and God, the man Christ Jesus. And Jesus Christ, the Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace, that you may obtain mercy and find grace for help in the time of need. Which means we go as children of God, we approach God now in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> we don't ask angels, please pray, angels, please pray. You know, John wanted to worship an angel, but you know what angel told him in the book of Revelation? He said, do not do such a thing. No, don't do it. He said, because myself, I am a fellow servant. So they minister to us, angels. And to minister to us means that they attend to us. They, uh, they are watchers over us. In Psalm uh, uh, 37, the Bible says, The angels of the Lord encamp around our battles to deliver us from every destruction because we fear the most holy God. And also in Psalm 91, uh, verse 11, I believe, he says, for he has given his angels charge over us. They bear us up in their hands, lest we dash our feet against the stone. So you see the angel, an angel of God rescuing Daniel from the lion's den. You see an angel of God rescuing Peter from the hands of King Agrippa the first. Because at this time he already killed James, the brother of John. Now he wants to lay hold of Peter to kill him. But we were told that the angel of God rescued him from his hands. And I am sure that angels of the Lord, they have rescued you and uh, myself on several occasions. We don't see them with our physical eyes because they are non-corporal beings. But you will tell that from that destruction that you were rescued, it was a hand of an angel. <laughs> you will tell. Because you, you, all of a sudden, you, you, you thought you have come to the end of the road. But all of a sudden, you were rescued. An angel did that. He delivered you from that destruction. Also now, angels join us in our worship to God. We see this in Hebrews chapter 12. Where the Bible says that you have come to heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to innumerable company of angels. They accompany us. They join us in our worship to God. Okay? How powerful are angels? <laughs> A very good question. We read in, uh, I think it's in Second Kings, uh, 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 1935, one angel slew 185,000 Assyrian soldiers in one night when uh, uh, Sennacherib was the Assyrian king. Just one angel. Now, you can imagine when Jesus Christ said that I, I, I can ask my father to send me uh, uh, 12 legions of angels. He's talking about, about 72,000 angels. Now, if one angel in one fell swoop could destroy 185,000 men, think about what 72,000 angels will do. <laughs> this will be complete obliteration. <laughs> so do not underestimate the power of an angel. They are powerful beings. Very, very powerful. So now, if you do not believe in angels, we have uh, a lot of information in the Bible that, would, that, tells, that, that, that tell us that uh, 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 angels exist. Now, you may have seen an angel without knowing it. Because the Bible, from what we read 
from the Bible, God gives them that uh, 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 permission to sometimes they will take a form like a human being so that you can see them with your physical eyes. And also, God can also open your spiritual eyes and you can see them in the realm of the spirit. So we know that they have different, uh, they have, uh, they, 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 they take up uh, a different uh, hierarchy. Some angels are higher in uh, authority than other angels. You know, the Bible says, do not forget to entertain strangers. Because some have entertained angels on our ways. So what is he telling us? You may have seen an angel, but not knowing that he's an angel. You know, Abraham, when he entertained three guests, we were told that two of them were angels and one of them was the Lord himself. Which means Abraham saw them with his physical eyes. They look like men. Jacob wrestled with an angel till morning. They break. You could not wrestle with somebody that you cannot see. <laughs> I don't know if you have the ability to do that. <laughs> so it means that Jacob saw that angel in order to wrestle with that angel. <laughs> so... Jesus Christ told us that uh, we have angels. Yes, guiding angels. Because he said that the angels of the little children are always in the face of the Father in heaven. That's what Jesus Christ said. So do you think that uh, when you <laughs> do you think that when you grew up, you lost your angel? Oh no. For some of us, this is the time we need the angels the most. So we all have guided angels, you know. So there are so many more to cover about angels, but uh, we don't have that time today, so we're going to stop it uh, here for now. Let us continue in verse, um, in verse 8. But to the son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. His scripture of righteousness is a scripture of your kingdom. Now he's quoting from Psalm 50, 45 verse 6. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. What is going on here is that God calls Jesus God. That's what is going on here. He gives us the one of his attributes, righteousness. We also see a parallel passage in John uh, 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 chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. So you see that uh, Jesus Christ is the word of God. The Bible tells us that the word of God is God. We also see uh, another parallel passage in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. He shall be called wonderful counselor, the almighty God, everlasting father, Prince of Peace. So the Almighty God, that child that was given to us, the Son given to us, is now the Almighty God. So you see that that Son, Jesus Christ, born to us, is now also called the Almighty God. So my question to you is this. If God the Father called Jesus Christ God, <laughs> Who are we to say otherwise? Who are we to say that he's just an exalted being or an angel or a brother of Lucifer? Who are we to make such statements? 
We are now in verse 10. And you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth. Now he's quoting from Psalms 102 verse 25. And the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. And they will all grow old like a garment, like a clock. You will fold them up and they will be changed. But you are the same and your years will not fail. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here he begins to talk about the expiration date of this world. The universe that you and I see today has an expiration date. Because the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ upholds the universe by the word of his power. The thing that is holding the universe together is because of the power of the word of Jesus Christ. That is the force holding the world together. There is a day when he will let go. Just like you will fold an old clothes and throw it in the trash. There is a day when Jesus Christ, who created the heavens and the earth, will fold this universe. Just like a, a cloak. And he will let go. So, if you are so infatuated with the things of this world, in your pursuit... To get to riches and money and, and popularity. Think about it. There is a day when this world will expire. You cannot stay here forever. Peter in 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 11 tells us, seeing that all these things will be dissolved, what matter of persons ought you to be in a holy conduct and a godliness? Peter tells us that the universe will be dissolved by fervent heat. The Bible tells us that heaven and earth will pass away. But the word of our Lord Jesus Christ, the word of God, will not pass away. So there is a day. That day is coming. When everything you see now will just perish. So... Are you so much concerned about the things of this earth? They will perish. What have you done now about your spiritual retirement? Because whatever we see now, they are temporary. They're going to go away. They're going to fade. Have you ever thought that a, a human being is a spirit and will live forever? Where is this spirit going to spend eternity? should be what you think about sometimes. What preparation have you made so that you will have a secure eternity in heaven? Think about it. Because we have so many distractions in this world, every now and then, there is something in our way distracting us. And they will never come to an end. If you think that you're gonna get to a point whereby you have no more troubles or distractions, so that that day you will be in, uh, in peace, you know, in that flowering bed of roses. It's not going to happen. No. Whether you are a Christian or you are not. Not in this uh, 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 earth. So think about the future. I'll leave, you, I'll leave you with that thought. We are now in verse 13. But to which of the angels has he ever said, sit at my right hand. Till I make your enemies your footstool. He's quoting from Psalm 110 verse 1. Are there not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? So in summary, it, we have already covered this. You know, that are angels, the minister for us, to us, uh, as uh, 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 they, they attend to our needs, they are watchers over us. Uh, we already covered that part. So in summary, it is telling us here that uh, Jesus Christ is superior over all the angels. As a matter of fact, he created all the angels. And the one who created all the angels is superior to all the angels because he created them all. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
I have come to the end of today's teaching. I told you we're going to cover everything on time. Uh, next week, we will pick it up from uh, chapter 2. So I will encourage you to study chapter 2 ahead of time. If you are hearing my voice now and you are not yet born again, which means you are not yet a Christian, or perhaps you made a commitment to Christ uh, a while ago, but you walked away from that commitment and uh, you want to come back today to him, or you want to uh, uh, get born again today, I encourage you so much. It is the best decision that you will ever make in your life. You know, people make decisions in this world. Some of them are good. Some man made a decision that brought him $20 million. And they will tell the world about it, how they invested 10000 and it turned out to become $20 million and all that. So they are happy about it. To them, that could be been uh, uh, classified as the best decision they ever made. But not so. Anything that we can see or possess is not the best decision in life. The best decision is that decision that will give you eternity with Jesus Christ in heaven. Because we will continue to live after our body leave our uh, after our spirit leave our body. So, what are you gonna do today? For you to make this security, to ensure that uh, you have eternity with Christ, that is one thing to do. That one thing is that you must receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Using other words, you must be born again. There is only one way to be born again. First of all, let me tell you what it means to be born again. To be born again means that you believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. That he died for your sins and God raised him from the dead on the third day. Now, your path after you believe is you ask him to come into your life. Be your Lord and your Savior and you start a personal relationship with him. Now, this has nothing to do with uh, your self-righteousness your goodness, whatever you think that you have done right in the past. No, no, none of those things can save you. The only thing, only one that who can, the only one who can save you is Jesus Christ. And he doesn't require any of those things from you. He wants you to come as you were. So you receive the gift of salvation by faith, not by works. That's what it means to be born again. And the way to do it is that uh, it is only through Jesus Christ. So you ask him to come into your life. You have a personal relationship with him. Jesus Christ himself said in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Peter also will tell us in Acts of the Apostles, there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved except the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus also tells us that uh, if you do not believe that I am the Messiah, you will die in your sins. So anyone that comes to Christ has eternal life. But him that resists or refuses the Son of God, the wrath of God will abide in that one. That's what the Bible tells us. It doesn't matter the name of your denomination. It doesn't matter the name of your religion. The names don't make any, uh, 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 they don't make any big contribution. What makes the whole uh, change or impact is uh, Jesus Christ. You can be under any denomination and go to hell. It can be under any denomination and go to heaven. The key, the most important thing is believing in Jesus Christ and receiving him as your Lord and your Savior. That what matters. If there are, if, if there are some religions that are teaching people that are, uh, uh, every, all roads 
lead to heaven. That's not true. It's not true. Jesus Christ is the only way. If you want to spend eternity in heaven, you cannot say that I, I have relationship with God the Father, but then I don't believe in Jesus Christ. If your religion teaches you that, then you are on a wrong path. You still have the opportunity to change your curse of life today. You still have the opportunity to turn around. You still have the opportunity to secure your eternity in heaven by believing in Jesus Christ. I'm going to lead you now in a very short prayer. If you pray this prayer with all your heart and you mean it, right now you will be a recreated being. If you would die, you would go straight to heaven. Right now, you become a Christian. Pray this prayer with me. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe he is your son. He died for my sins. You raise him up from the dead on the third day. Oh, dear Lord Jesus Christ, I ask you, come into my life and be my Lord and my Savior. By faith now, I believe that I'm born again. I'm a child of God. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I turn away from my sin. Precious Father God, I thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ. Blessed be your holy name in Jesus' name. Amen. Congratulations. I welcome you to the kingdom of God. If you pray that prayer, please find a Bible-based church where they teach the word of God so you can grow in your faith. Remember, it is only those who hear the word of God and then they put the word of God in practice. We call them the doers of the word of God. They are the ones who receive the benefits of the word of God. I want to thank all our partners all over the world. Those that are helping us through their prayers, through their services, financial donations to spread the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to reach the unreached. Thank you so much. If you want to join this ministry, if you want to be a partner with this ministry, please go to our website, it is KUIM.org. My good friends, I would like to pray for you. May the Lord bless you and be with you always. May He lift up His countenance upon you and give you rest, peace in your heart. Even in the midst of your troubles and tribulations and trials. I pray that my Father God will give you the wisdom, wisdom not to make unnecessary mistakes. That he will grant you financial opportunities, help you get out of debt. I pray that my Father God will heal you today if you have any sickness in your body. Because Christ is the healer. I pray that he will help you to stand on that solid rock that is higher than yourself and that he will bless the rest of your week in the name of jesus christ and everybody said amen oh good friends of mine you see we live in a fallen world we have so many distractions we hear so many bad news every day but i want to encourage you in the lord regardless of what you hear regardless of what you see Always understand that surely there is an end and your expectations will never be cut off. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Baruch Hashem Adonai. Nast karabandile ele credeste ushe ku barate. Eskendolo masara yara prado. Velem no koto brokoto du sheriko pradasta fandama sele kele preteste. Inda o kolobushe, kula bushe, sulobushe, kula kala pate. Men le pradeste, kuko tolo le pradeste, keke dero solo kotolo le pradeste. Mana englen dem solo kodo prodosto jero ko pradeste. Thank you for listening to this message from Simple Truth Gospel with Kiria. A teaching ministry that teaches the word of God verse by verse. To help you grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.